Traveling the Vortex. We join Doug McLeod as he goes on a rather unfortunate and very memorable holiday with his family. And he arrives at episode number 285. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? I'm okay. How are you? Oh, all right. How are I'm, you? I'm well. I haven't really talked to you since you got into my house. No, you haven't. You've just been sitting here ignoring me, not saying a word, being rather rude for inviting somebody over to your house. To be fair, you just walked in. <laughs> I, to be fair, at That's this point, true. I figure... He did just walk in. You, you know where everything's at. That's true. <laughs> You've been to my house often enough, your family. You That's might true. As, might as well help yourself Walk in and start helping myself. Here, here's Ooh, the, here's the rules. Movie collection, here I come. Here's the rules for all the listeners at home. If you've been in my house more than twice, I must like you. You're welcome to whatever there is. <laughs> if it's the last of it, please ask first. That's pretty much how that rolls. I usually ignore that rule. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, last one. Sorry. Too bad. A week later. Keith, how are you? We never asked you how you are. You always, every week, you ask us how we're doing. You ask us how we're doing. We never extend the courtesy of asking you how you're doing. (laughs) And so, Keith, on behalf of Sean and I, how are you this week? I already asked him. I'm all right. All right. Did you guys have a good week? I did. Well, up until tonight. Tonight was a little flat. National news wise, nothing personal, but yeah, yeah, I've been struggling with that all day too. But ah, no, yeah, it was it was an okay week. It's all right, not much going on. Yeah, pretty went, s- I went and saw a movie. Week. What'd you go see? I went and saw <laughs> X Men. Oh, we can't talk about it tonight. Then <laughs> I knew that's what you were talking about pre-show. John, did you go see? X-Men? I went and saw X Men. It's not the worst X Men movie. <laughs> I'll start with that. It's got some. Uh, Got some redeeming qualities to it. It's it's overstuffed. It's there's too much. There's too many people. There's too much going on. But overall, I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was good. I liked it. I, I kind of agree with with your assessment that it was uh, it was very enjoyable. Um, I agree. There's a little too much going on from the standpoint of here's some mutants that we don't really get a great intro especially for. They the, just kind of show horsemen. up, especially the horsemen. Which you know, I guess it's a good thing that two of well. What's the official stance on X3 now? Are we counting this one or not? Because it sure seems like this one went extra couple of steps to really kind of go, it's not part of anything anymore. Well, especially the big fire moment. Yeah. Which is totally Foreshadowing Brian. doing that properly. <laughs> Which is totally Brian Oh, oh you're talking this about the... This, uh, this works. <laughs> Phoenix this is moment. how it's supposed to yeah. Well, and that was my other I'll problem. I'll try not to spoil it. That was my <laughs> other problem with the, the this film was I thought the Phoenix moment come way too soon. I think we should have waited a little longer. On See, I, I think it wasn't... I mean, you don't have to now that X3 has happened, but... It was a glimmer of Phoenix. I think yeah, I don't think it was anything... Phoenix later. I don't think it was anything near now. what she's capable of. Or what she's going to do. Uh, Sophie Turner mm-hmm. did a fantastic job. She she shines in this film as as uh, See, Sarah had Jean some, Grey. had some trouble not seeing her as Sansa. I thought she tackled the American accent with ease. I completely believe that. Uh, another highlight of the film was what they did with Wolverine. I thought that was <laughs> having just that truncated scene and having the imagery from the comic book yeah. of the Weapon X uh, gear, that whole gear setup he had was, was terrific. And, and the moment that the two of them had before he left, I thought it was perfect setup for whatever of, of the original trilogy. See, I, I, I'm with... I'm, I'm, I'm in I, I agree with you. I wish I hadn't known he was in it because it was Sean's, a perfect cameo. For I'm it. in Sean's court, though, now with... I just don't think you can rectify these three films now leading into the original X-Men trilogy. I think we've created a new timeline for the X-Men. First Class was really good. Days of Future Past is still my favorite. And then this one just really kind of fell short for me. And so I'm I'm hoping that if they keep going with this new X-Men line that they they fix some things that they've... Again, I think this was just overstuffed with too much going on. No one had a chance to develop. They had this terrific plot line going on with uh, Michael Fassbender's Magneto. Terrific. And he just knocks it out of the park as far as the emotion and the, the brevity and everything. And then it's overshadowed by everything else that's going on. They needed to focus on one plot line. They needed to focus on one heavy 
they've got this terrific storyline kind of going on for Jean, but it it really kind of felt like okay, we're going to shove her to the front here, which was great, but you didn't build up to it well enough. And then you've got um, Scott, who's this is just an introduction film. There's, I got oh, nothing and it, and from it. And it's a great introduction of him to from Jean it, and I how they kind of from form. it though. It was just this kid that shows up and he's dealing with these. You got a guy who's dealing with. Life has just crapped on him with this ability now. And, and then he loses his brother. And, yeah, and then it just... And it's, unfortunately, there's too many great sub-lines going that don't get any Because they're, they're all overshadowed exactly. by the apocalypse exactly. element. Which, ha, see what I did there. Um, <laughs> and, you, then you've got, and, and then you've got Jennifer Lawrence and uh, uh, Malcolm Holt. No, what's... what's uh, uh, Beast? Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt. Returning in this movie and getting nothing to do. Yeah, they get a tour around the mansion. Nothing to do. What they did well, what they did really well, and the, the 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 moments of the movie that I enjoyed the best was the battle with Apocalypse at the end, and how everybody I thought the everybody really were great. had to I mean, was forced through, to come together good. and fight him, and that's how you do a team superhero movie climax. That was really well done. That harkened back to some of the the, the, the Avengers, the first film, how they ended up working together. and they, that That's one of my favorite team battles ever. This one ended up being that same way. I enjoyed the the, the, the Egyptian bit at the beginning and how they kind of set Apocalypse cool. up. Yeah. That was all really well done. Um, I thought Oscar Isaac did a great job. Um, I didn't didn't mind that he was purple. You know, it was it was an enjoyable flick, and that's that's kind of why I hope that okay, we're going to get one more that manages to tie them together in that way that we all go, oh sweet, yeah, you fixed it, and then I'm done with this group of mutants. I want a new group well, of people. I don't want new actors playing them. I want new mutants. I'm tired of Storm and Cyclops and Jean Grey and Mystique. Mystique. That's, I just and I mean, Magneto. This was and this Mithrax. was the best evidence of we've run our course with a character was. Putting Jennifer Lawrence in there as Mystique and then not doing anything with the character. I didn't hate it. I liked it. I mean, I'm sitting there saying like it, I didn't like the movie, but it was it was fine. <laughs> it was it was um, it was what it needed to be. I think. And also, I it, it well, stung it, because I really liked Days of Future Past. I really liked that. It's also we're coming off of Civil War, yeah. so oh, yeah. just nothing's going to compare to that. But. That's kind of the X Men in general. I think <laughs> the, 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 whole, the entire X Men franchise, for as enjoyable as some of the films have been, and as bad as some of the films have been, it's been overshadowed. It just doesn't live up yeah, to it's, any it's of this. I mean, I'm, I'm so so grateful that X Men and X Two in particular kind of opened the door for the modern superhero yeah. movie. But unfortunately, that's where their footnote is going to end, yeah, is they open agreed. the door for the modern well, superhero and, movie. And in this one, unfortunately, some of the great strengths of the previous X-Men films are exploring the morality of the mutants. And because this one was overstuffed, you didn't get to do that. Uh, speaking of McAvoy, I watched Victor Frankenstein. How was that? Not very great. <laughs> 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 it was interesting. Uh uh, Daniel Radcliffe did a really good job as Igor. It's, it's all kind of viewed through his perspective. Uh, here's a nice little tidbit. Spencer Wilding was the monster at the end. I think I knew that. I think I knew that. Cool. Yeah. Well, speaking of Egypt, <laughs> I watched Gods of Egypt. Oh! How was that? That's a hot mess. <laughs> it looks like a hot mess. We, we kind of planned that. I mean, going into it, we knew... Because, I mean, it's, you've seen the trailer. It looks like 300 meets Clash of the Titans meets... In Egypt. Yeah. It's, and it's terrible. It's terrible. Now, it's terrible in a really bad movie terrible kind of way. It's very pretty. I'd say it's, <laughs> mostly the effects worked. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of a, oh boy. <laughs> I also watched Anchorman for the first time, and I don't get it. I really don't understand why everybody is so hot to try it on, on, on these movies. And then Mel and I watched uh, um, Ward Just Killed Rosalind. Spoilers for anybody who's not up to that one. Ooh, so, you're getting there. Mo- moving along there. Uh, we also watched The Danish Girl. The Eddie Redmayne yep. Oscar nominated film. It was interesting. I don't know if I'd ever watch it again. But it, it was it was it was pretty interesting. You watch anything else, Glenn? Nope. I'm 
sure I did, but I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we had a big Saturday because in addition to seeing uh, uh, X-Men, we also went to Crypticon in Kansas City, um, which is a, a horror convention, which not my cup of tea. But year after year after year, they managed to get at least one guest. And I'm like, oh, I would totally go for that person. Uh, and this year there were there were three of them. Well, it would have been four, but uh, Ted Raimi had to had to leave. I think this is the second time he's had to cancel, isn't it? Um, this I think is he was last year. He was was he? If he if he was, if he was supposed to be last year, he canceled really early in the process because oh, okay. I didn't know anything about him last I year. I remember hearing about. Maybe I'm thinking of Kansas City. But um, we went and got uh, got to sit and talk with uh, David Della Rocca and Sean Patrick Flannery, who were uh, two of the three leads in uh, the Boondock Saints. And, uh, of course, uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, I remember him from Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, so that's where I got him from. And then um, Elvira, Cassandra Peterson was there, so that was that was kind of fun. And she still looks amazing for being however old she is now, 60-something. Yeah, she must be in her 60s. But um, So we had fun with that, and then we went and saw the movie, and then we went to Paul Simon. How was Paul? Paul's also as amazing for as old as he is. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I have no doubt. I, I, I heard a couple of his, his new songs from the new album, because uh, with my ticket purchase, they sent me a free copy of the CD. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool. I was like, hey, this is, this is a little bit of all right. It now is the most expensive CD I've ever bought, but... <laughs> <laughs> Because you could look at it that way. Uh, you bought a CD and got a concert. I, I bought a CD and got a free concert out of it. <laughs> but um, it, it, you, when, on the CD, when he sings, he, you can. It's kind of like listening to um, to Peter Davidson and Big Finish. He's you can tell he's a little bit older and he's just not quite hitting it. Man, in concert, he's he's still got it. He's running around and uh, you know wailing on all of the guitars because he changes out a guitar for every song. It seems like. Um, and, and they're all, you know, some are acoustic and some are electric and some are bass and some are, and he's he's got them all lined up there and he does all these things. But uh, had a lot of energy and a lot of fun and the crowd was very into it. It was at Starlight in Kansas City. I've never been to Starlight before in my life. The one in, inside Swope Park next to the I've zoo. Been to, no, I've never been to that one either. It is gorgeous. I like it so much better than Sandstone and I never thought I'd say that because I'm a Sandstone diehard. Uh, it is a gorgeous amphitheater and it was really nice and it helps that we had great seats but there's not a bad seat in the bunch um so i it, beg to differ well where we were at it didn't look like there were bad seats <laughs> we i saw, suppose up at the top there might we be saw miss saigon there in the middle of july it was 102 degrees but our seats weren't the best either so needless to say i didn't enjoy miss saigon <laughs> <laughs> or uh starlight theater but huh. You should try Paul in, 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 uh, in mid-June. I, we almost went and saw Ringo there last year, and it just was too late before I decided to get tickets. I'll, I'll be curious to see. The, the test will be when we go back, because we've, we've already bought tickets for Weird Al, who Is will be in there? August. Ooh. So we'll see how that goes, because it's <laughs> a big outdoor thing. But yeah, we had a great time, and uh, despite uh, Mel came down with something, she's fighting a head cold, so kind of all day she was kind of out of it. And then the concert came, and she was just miserable. And I was like, honey, if you want to leave, we can get you. I'm not missing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't want I'm not missing this. Okay. But uh, her meds finally kicked in in time for, you can call me Al. So she, <laughs> she was a little bit happier about that because she was able to stand up and oh, you know, move around some. So how is this new album? Is it good? Uh, I've only listened to it once all the way through. And, uh, yeah, it's good. I enjoy it. I don't enjoy it as much as Graceland, but... <laughs> okay, that kind of tells me what I need to know. <laughs> well, I mean, Graceland is, is probably an unfortunate thing to compare it to, because Graceland That's lived in my CD player for um, forever. You know, I, it just... Over and over and over and over yeah. and all the way through. I mean, yes, I loved You Can Call Me Out, and I listened to that one predominantly, but I fell in love with the rest of it. So uh, this one I just haven't had a chance to really get to that yet. That's but, fair. But no, we had a good time. It was a busy Saturday. Well, yeah. crammed into that one, but... Well, anything else, or should we move on to news? Let's move on to news. Uh, well, if you... What's you in the news, Keith? You've probably uh, <laughs> seen that it's the Queen's birthday. <laughs> and that means more members of the British Empire, including the amazing Brian Blessed. Yay! He got an OBE. 
Brian Blessing got an OB. So he's not quite a sir yet. So, but he is an officer of the British Empire. Mm-hmm. He's a sir in our hearts. He is. Oh, he yes. Definitely. Congratulations, Voltan. And then uh, Penelope Wilton, Wilton is now a dame. And for those who don't recognize the name, that's Harriet Jones. Oh, P. Phi Del North. Yeah. <laughs> now it's Dame Harriet Jones. Dame P. Harriet. Del North. <laughs> And prime minister at one point, wasn't she? At the in yeah, stolen her. Well, former prime minister. Yes, we know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yes, she was prime right. minister. She was in, prime uh, minister in Christmas Invasion. Yeah. Former prime minister in uh, stolen her. She's a dame. She's a dame now. This pleases me on some <laughs> strange level that I cannot, uh, I cannot express. So because we go over this every single time. <laughs> Brian Blessed has two more ranks to climb before he can be a sir. Officially. Before he is knighted. A sir. <laughs> before he is knighted. Na- Dame is as high as you can go without being royalty, right? For females? Uh, let me check on that. I just closed that. Uh, <laughs> of course you did. Thank goodness con- for Control shift t <laughs> That's a thing. Oh yeah, it opens any closed tab. <gasps> yeah. It's a lifesaver. It's just on PC, isn't it? It's a Chrome, Firefox. Oh, it's a Chrome thing. It's an internet thing? It's an internet thing. I don't know about Safari or Internet Explorer. I learned something new today. There you go. There's, There's your... no Internet Explorer anymore. Oh, yeah, Microsoft Edge. Well, there is Edge. if you have an older version. Well, there was an Internet Explorer for there. Even when Internet Explorer was still around, nobody was using it. Well, it's true. Uh, no, there is a Knight or Dame Grand Cross of the Order of the British Empire. Ah. Okay. So there is it's a one more rank. Extremely rare and given out for exceptional service. Okay. They keep the sir or dame title, obviously. It's not sir sir or anything like that. Sir sir. Sir sir. Dame dame. <laughs> uh so that happened and then uh two weekends ago and it just kinda blew up this past week that Peter Capaldi uh, when he was at AwesomeCon says he filmed something concerning, new concerning Clara Oswald. Uh, He teases, I'm not sure how successfully Clara was able to wipe his mind. In fact, I did just uh, I was about to tell you something I can't tell you. He adds, we just shot something that Clara was still there in. So that's all he's saying. So, all of the statements of Clara's coming back, not necessarily true. It could very easily be for the Doctor's timeline set in the time when he was with Clara. Some sort of memory. Or, what I think is more likely, considering the set photos we've seen from class, that class takes place before Clara's unfortunate demise and then rebirth and so then whatever he filmed there he would have referenced Clara to even if she's not on that show that's where I'm sticking it that's where I'm putting my flag (laughs) hmm what do you guys think of this news The, the second I baited half. you into putting that on news, and then I'm going to say I think it's not news. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's silly. It I, is. Silly. I think we can wait another year, and we'll find out what the heck it was. The, the, the second half of that half statement, year, I could, I could buy special. with what you with class with, with your the theory. The first half of that with uh, I don't think she wiped the doctor's memory as well as I. Oh well, I can't say anything more. It doesn't jive. I don't think with your theory. So, oops. I don't know. I think it's a flashback sequence. I hope it is. Yeah. It's no offense. I'm kind of done with her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jenna Coleman's a lovely lady. And, it's, and, it's, and, and a unless we get a ten minute bit where he well, takes her back to Califrey. It's either that. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that. Damn, Keith, that's harsh. It's either that or. I loved her death. It was. It's either that or Clara has been in his mind several times before in Series 9. Yeah, so it may be Clara in his mind again. That is a good uh, good way to look at it, too. Okay. That, uh, that I would buy as well. In his mind a, palace? It's happened a couple in, of yeah. times now. So. If, she, if she's in the mind palace. That, uh, 
I don't have one. I'm going to steal his. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, that's all I have for news. Glenn, you got anything for news? Nope, nothing else. Let's well, move on to feedback. Feedback. Our feedback comes from Holly. She writes in saying, Beyond the Doctor, what we did on our holiday. Hey guys, great last episode. It's no pain to run the book club on Goodreads, nor is Royal Blood a pain to read, at least in my opinion. Keith nailed it on the head when he mentioned the Royal Pains TV show. I just happened to be watching an episode of it when I was emailing you feedback. Though I swear I went back and fixed the error. Darn autocorrect. That's what I get when I try to multitask. Smiley face. Anyway, on to the review. I really enjoyed what we did on our holiday. Great cast and enjoyable story, even in its sadder moments. The kids really stole the show. David's role in the film was good too, especially near the end. I'll wrap it up here. Looking forward to ever hearing your thoughts on the film. Holly from Wisconsin. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. I do want to mention that uh, we did get a uh, mention on Twitter this week from Daniel, who is uh, at Electric Maestro 5. And he said, just discovered the uh, Traveling the Vortex podcast today. Glad to be listening to you guys. And Daniel, we're glad that you're listening. Yeah. Welcome, Thanks for Daniel. listening, Daniel. Uh, speaking of the Goodreads Book Club, the new poll for July is now up. So you can go check that out and vote on what you want for the next book. Uh, and then we should also, since before we uh, move on to our review, we promised last week that we were going to reveal what Mitch won with her raffle ticket. Uh, and we... I've determined that your grand prize will be a sonic screwdriver remote control. Yay! Yay! That we got donated to us courtesy of Ben. Courtesy so of Time Lord Ben. Thank so, you, Ben. And yep. um, Mitch, if you want to send us your send us an email and let us uh, give us your address to make sure we have the most recent address uh, so we can ship that off to you. Or let us know if you already have that. <laughs> yeah, and then we can find some other plan for a, 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 a prize. Um, of course, you can email us at feedback at Traveling the Vortex, uh, on Twitter, at Travel Vortex, Facebook, Traveling the Vortex. Uh, and, of course, don't forget the Goodreads Book Club. Patreon sub- subscribers, hold on to your lottery. Ah, I did it again. Your raffle tickets, because uh, we will have a future drawing uh, coming up. On probably sometime this later this year, so hold on to those tickets. Don't get rid of them; it's not over yet. Um, Michelle or Mitch won't be able to uh, win because she has already won, but everybody else is still in for a chance for another drawing. Also, if you are supporting us on Patreon already, we thank you very much. And if not, consider doing so. You can go to our web page, travelingvortex.com. Click on the link there. We also have some other sponsors that we'd like you to check out as well. And I want to give another shout-out to Ben, who recently made some purchases through Amazon through from our website. So a portion of those proceeds go into us. Thank you very much, Ben, for doing that. Yes, thank you. Speaking of contests, I have decided to call off the Skittle Dalek contest promotion because I have solved the dilemma, and I've beaten <laughs> all of you to the punch, and I have figured out how to remedy the problem with the Skittle Daleks. So I, Are you going to reveal that to us? No. Write it first. No, I'll write it and release it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, that was cold, man. <laughs> we said we were going to wait a few months and let people have a chance, and then you're like calling it off? No, I, 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 I do have an idea. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I do have an idea. <laughs> uh, but I would very much like to see somebody write in with one that topples me off the, off the hill and, uh, you know, knock my socks off. So. That contest is still ongoing. If you had an idea for how to make the Skittle Daleks relevant and important and uh, uh, significantly more cool than they currently are, by all means, send it in to us. Sean will write a script, and you will get credit and a prize for doing so. That's right. All right, shall we move on to our review? What we did on our holiday. Doug and Abby take their kids on a family vacation. Surrounded by relatives, and the kids innocently reveal the ins and outs of their family life and many intimate details about their parents. It's soon clear when it comes to keeping a big secret under wraps, the rest of the family, from the rest of the family, their children are their biggest liability. 
that's the synopsis of this? That now, was not what that was, it's not what this movie's about, that is it? what the first 30 minutes of this movie was about. <laughs> so I give the movie a dun-dun-dun. I give that synopsis a wah-wah-wah <laughs> because it is not... No. I don't know, though. If I had to pick that movie up, read the back of that, it, that intrigued me enough that I would have watched it. Oh, I yeah. I would have oh, yeah. completely out of it. So, no, I don't think it's a I kind of would have liked wah. to have seen that it movie. Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't encapsulate the film, but it is a good tease. And it, it's not lying, but it's like Keith said, that's like the first 30 minutes of the film. And then things happen. <laughs> but I, the, I like how it how it how it... It ends with they later find out their kids are a liability. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's it. I think it almost that, makes it sound like they're going to put a hit out on the kids. But that's, <laughs> well, but that that's a good synopsis. It sells the film without giving anything away. Nothing. Gave that's it, true. Nothing could give anything away on this film. Here, here's here's the thing. Here's I, a spoiler for you. It's on the cover. I didn't give. Oh, hey, it is. It is on the cover. I didn't give. I didn't give this a dun dun dun. But I like this movie. Well, no, no, no. Let me stop. As soon as I was done with this movie, my first thought was, this is either the greatest movie I've ever seen, <laughs> or, what the heck did I just watch? <laughs> I, I, I came on more on the end of, this was great. <laughs> Not greatest movie I've ever seen. Oh, it's one of the greatest <laughs> movies I've ever seen. I loved this film. I, I absolutely loved it, too. But I still what the heck I just watched. This, I, what I love about this film is the originality of it. This is this is something I have never seen before. And when this movie started, first thirty minutes in, I would have gone, "Hey, this is exactly like the synopsis." <laughs> <laughs> and then it went completely a different direction, and I went, "I didn't expect this. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened here?" Um, I don't. I don't even know how to. I just kept to, thinking, "Did this really happen?" I don't Did even know really? how to define this. The performances are great. The kids are terrific. And Billy Connolly is wonderful. Did you watch any of the bonus features? I know you watched it. I, was, I watched the deleted scenes. I which was, was like bawling three. through half of the film, through, through halfway through the film, and then the tears dried up because I went, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not really going to happen." Oh, it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> they really did that. Part of why the kids were great, because uh, I, I watched the bonus feature uh, that they had making of. They didn't really give the kids script. You could tell. You could tell those kids were ad libbing, but them not direction. badly. You, no, it was no. not a oh my gosh, this kid's ad libbing. It was, I think this kid's ad libbing all these lines. This is terrific. They gave them great direction of what to do. I think it was mostly the two younger ones. I think the older one, Lottie, they she, she had more had of a script. Yeah, she would have had to. Plus, she's older, so she did. She probably could follow script directions better. Yeah, the kids really kind of had to let them do their thing. You had to say, "This is what's happening here. React." And they did. <laughs> they did wonderfully. And, and it helped some of the performances for the adults, too, oh, because yeah, the, the reactions, reactions are genuine. Terrific. <laughs> Is it as smart as an octopus? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, and it's, it's things that kids it's would just, say. It's just like it family life. It's what kids would say. You, 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 you sleep with, with Norman in your bed. He's, he's a rock. No, I don't. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be silly. silly. <laughs> He sleeps at the well, end of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> we can't take the rocks. I'm going to hold my breath then. <laughs> okay, okay. They're going to the back. They're going to the back. And as oh. a parent, I thought, okay, that's a little overreactive. But then they sell it better later that she has actually passed out. Yeah. This is an ongoing thing. And I thought, yeah, I think at some point, as a parent, you break down and go, okay, I give in. <laughs> a, a lot of the things start out as over the top, and then they back sell it so it makes sense it or it, really it justifies the behavior. Even Jeez. even the just <laughs> even the behavior of the three kids. Oh yeah, is justified because well, it, we're going to spoil this. They. <laughs> They give their grandfather a Viking funeral when he dies on the beach when he's watching them. They set him in a boat, set the boat on fire, and send it out into the, into the sea. And We were watching that bit and we were, we're, uh, as they were building the raft. And Sarah turns to me, how are they going to get him on the raft? <laughs> oh, they did it, too. Dude. <laughs> and they explained how they figured yeah. it out. I, watched, I used my brain. I watched that Stonehenge documentary. The best line is when the kid... Kid finally fesses up and says, "You know, I don't actually think they burned the body." Well, that's what was great was the what? beginning when he rips the horns off the Viking yeah. helmet. They didn't actually have horns. Remember me yeah. telling you guys that weeks ago when we did the uh, uh, girl who never or the, the the girl who died. 
Yeah. I, and then they I, have I, that I, come full wow. circle at the end. Well, he rips them off, and they don't really explain it. And it's not until he's talking to his grandfather later when he says, why did you take the horns off the helmet? And explains to him, it didn't have horns. It wasn't historically accurate. I was like, you go, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rip those horns off that helmet. Also rip a great big chunk out of well, time meddler for me. Then they have, <laughs> then they have this this wonderful conversation in there where he goes, "Well, couldn't they uh, if they threw a spear? Couldn't oh, they go through, right the through the holes? The, they didn't have holes in their helmet either. They didn't really consider that." <laughs> Billy Conley with the kids was just so fantastic. He was, and I have grown up watching Billy Conley, and specifically watching Billy Conley stand up, and I absolutely love him. He's one of the funniest men on the planet. Agreed, and. He's terrific, and he, but he's always come across as this one type of person to me. He's always been Billy Comedy, Billy Billy Connolly, the comedian. And I was so excited to watch this, even though I've always had that perception of him. And I've seen him in other things. I think it was terrific in the X Files, uh, the movie, the last movie that they did. Uh, not fight the feature, but the other one. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I truth. always thought he was terrific in that. And truth is out there. Yeah, the truth is out there. That's what it is. Seen that, believe it or not. And uh, he's in that. And he does a great job, but he's not Billy Connolly in that. He's a he's very serious. In fact, I wish he would have won an Oscar for it because he did such a phenomenal job. But those don't get nominated. So coming to this one, I thought Even I was going to get role in Boondock Saints. Was... I haven't seen Boondock Saints, so <laughs> yeah. Um, but going into this, I knew that there was a chance that we were. But knowing it was a comedy, I thought, okay, we're probably going to get more of the Billy Connolly I'm familiar with. Well, we didn't. We got this really serious. But you know, he's funny. He he says funny things. He's hilarious. He, 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 there's great lines, <laughs> but he's not that comedic Billy Con- uh, Connolly character or person persona that he has on stage. He was this real subtle and just. I wanted him to be my grandpa. <laughs> he was so yeah. good, and he was so good with the kids. He was so good with the family, and he was so good dealing with his demise, with his death, with the, the pain and the sickness and everything that he had. And I wish he'd got an Oscar for this movie now because it was so <laughs> terrific. I don't think he could because I think it was British. But maybe yeah, he BBC, got a BAFTA. I don't, BBC, I don't know. Did he get a BAFTA for this one? Maybe. Oh, look. Um, just wonderful, a wonderful performance by everybody. I thought David Tennant was fantastic. I think he's in it more than you guys think he's in it, but <laughs> I thought he was great. I thought Rosamund Pike was fantastic. I liked the the guy that played David Tennant's brother was the perfect you know who that character. Was? The sheriff of Nottingham in Robot of Sherwood. Oh, was he? Okay, really? Yeah. I so, didn't so the Who connections in this, in addition to Mrs. Uh, what Kensington. That's where I know her from. <laughs> it, I looked her up even trying to figure out where I knew her from. The little girl, Lottie, the oldest, she's the little girl from the Rings of Akaton. Okay, the singing, the little girl. No that's the, the, yeah. The singing. yeah, yeah. Lots of connection there. Wow. Well, you that, know, that's it's a BBC extent. film. So. <laughs> I really want Billy Conley now. You know, <laughs> Billy Conley, he was uh, Billy Bones. Oh, wait, that was the uh, Muppets. That was a Muppet connection. <laughs> Rosamund there Pike. he's Billy Connolly. Oh. <laughs> there he's that character that he's plays on stage. But. The the only character, the only actor, and I think she did a great job. I think Rosamund Pike did do a great job. But part of it is on my own end. I ex- I I could not look at her and not see Gone Girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, initially, I, I I went there, but then Sarah, eventually, Sarah too. She was like, "You're just going to get Gone Girl, David Tennant." <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> I haven't even seen that movie yet, and I got that one. The, the, the sister-in-law, too. Yeah, she Terrific. was great. Everybody in this did so good. It's You know, the quality of British films is just above and beyond sometimes what they're putting out in Hollywood. And it's just... It, I, it, I was flabbergasted by the fact that this is a... I don't know if BBC Films is funded through the same department that is funding the government television channel... But man, they are putting out some terrific <laughs> material. Yeah. The, what was the last? Something else we watched. I watched recently, or we watched recently, was a BBC film as well. Yeah. Oh, Whit- Whitnell and I was a yeah. BBC film. Yeah. And a terrific movie. They put out quality stuff, and I really, I, I applaud them for taking some original scripts and things that haven't been done. And it's, it's not the Hollywood cookie cutter, you know stamp out the same story in the same film over and over again it was something original and unique and i'm so, I've, I've, so I'm, I'm a much better person for having seen this movie it was so good and so different i was reflecting on when it when it started and the, the first half hour when it was what the box description 
Which was said. thoroughly entertaining. Which was entertaining. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, reading this description is what made me want to see this movie and go, hey, David Tennant's in a thing. We should do that for our, our Beyond the Doctor. But the first 30 minutes and this description match up. And I was watching it going, this is the difference between a British production and an American production in film. Because there's not enough random background music going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. During that's, these that's montage they, sequences. They yeah. have to get all the way up to the Highlands before we get our first piece right. of, yeah. of, of background music. And it worked. And it worked there. But in an American film, it would have been crammed full of like three or four different songs already. Yep. That uh, were going to be hits on the soundtrack. And this one would have been pop culture, yeah. Here and and, yeah. and, and yeah. so I, I was just, I'm just kind of reflecting on that. It's like you can really tell that the just the, the the entire top to bottom, the way they handle the making of film is different. And then all of a sudden, the film went and went and took this left <laughs> turn over here, and it really became the Billy Connolly story, which I was fine with because Billy, Billy Connolly's great, and I love Billy Connolly, and I was so excited that hey, there's Billy Connolly, and he's got a big part in it, and he's funny, and he's doing all these things, and then he's serious and a little dramatic, but he's still funny. And I told him, I was like, I hope you're prepared, because as Katrina gets older, I'm going to be the Billy Connolly grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're in for, because yeah. I've already decided before I saw this movie, that's how I'm going to, you know. Just don't get sick, Sean. <laughs> well, that's too late. But <laughs> please, I can't drive. Sure, you can. <laughs> Just, I'm going to push the pedal. You better steer. <laughs> and, he takes off the, and she takes out that sign. You know, the other thing. I've been trying to hit that for years. The other difference between American film and this and a British film is I kept expecting the tragedy to come a lot sooner. I kept expecting this thing to go south when, he, when she took the wheel, when. The kids wandered off. When I kept think, seeing, okay, this is where this, this, is, something, this is something where something bad's bad going to happen. happen. Something, and they did the tragedy so subtly, and it was mm-hmm. so well done. Even by pulling the wool over her eyes when he <laughs> pretends to be dead the first time, and he sets up, Sarah and then you're like, the okay, of, well, oh God, did he really? when he died the second time, I had it in the back of my mind. Oh, maybe he didn't really die. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get him on the raft, and he's going to go, ha! Ah! <laughs> and he didn't. About the time the middle kid started dumping gasoline, I thought to myself, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to wake weird. up, now is the time to wake up. <laughs> well, and then I'm, well, I'm, I'm convinced. When he farts, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they react to it. They're like, grandfather, come yeah, on. They yeah, think he's, like, yeah. I'll tell you. The other thing was, I kept thinking, okay, they're talking vi- uh, Viking funeral. They're talking about a funeral pyre on the sea. <laughs> No, they're not going to go there. And, they get, and so I kept thinking, you know, they'll get him on the raft and they'll send him out. They'll get him on the raft and they'll send him out to sea. They get him on the Oh, my God, he's pouring gasoline. They're really going to go all the way. And they do. And, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so bleak and dark and well, funny that's, at the same time. And that's the great thing. It's, it's hilarious. But at the same moment, at the same time, it has its great poignancies and great messages that he's giving these kids of everyone's ridiculous and just accept everyone as they are. I love that that the kids get it. Yeah. They yeah, because the adults get won't get it and yeah. yeah. Well, and nothing summed it up better than the speech the the brother gave at the end at the eulogy when he says, you know, I think Dad would have been laughing and so yeah. silly. <laughs> He'd have been laughing at us running around trying to find his body. <laughs> He'd have been laughing at you know fooling the cops and doing this and just it, it, it that really was such did. a great that that entire funeral at the very end was such a great character moments for everybody of the brother kind of being less of a jerk yeah yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> and having his son play the song that his his uh his grandpa would have liked and then with with david Tennant's character and and all of them kind of Deciding to be a bit more grown up, but still have fun at the same time. All of the, it was—it was such a perfect end to the. Well, film. and I love the idea that the the David Tennant, that, that Douglas and and uh, uh, Anna, what's her name? Abby. Abby are you know? I mean, they're they're going through they they're going through this divorce process. They're going through this separation, and. If again, if it had been an American film, by they the end of the film, together. they'd have been back together. Yeah. And, but I always see those those comedy, those romantic comedies. And I think it, what didn't work the first time is eventually going to come back and, and rear its ugly head again. And it, the, the, that's so unrealistic. But to place it in the, the aspect of, yeah, they still got it wrong and they resolved a lot of their the, the things they were fighting about, they're not getting back together. And then the reality of it is this is a very realistic 
film. <laughs> it really is. It's grounded in reality. And I love the message that the kids are really the only ones that get it. Yeah. Um, I think what we should do, though, is we should drill down to what we do these Beyond the Doctors for. And that's <laughs> Because I was just thinking. That we was, have yeah. said this is a great movie. However, that being said, I think I love David Tennant's portrayal. And I think what I like about David Tennant, because even though I loved David Tennant in Jessica Jones, mm-hmm. there are still moments that you see his performance of the Doctor. You really do. Even if he, though he's a, he's a complete polar opposite, you still see glimpses or moments of like the doctor that, like that bit when in the office and... david Tennant is being himself a scottish man <laughs> which yeah he's in a role himself pre- he's, here pretty much he is completely drastically different from the doctor and i really yeah. like to see when he's able to not have to put on the guise of being somebody else or being somebody british or being somebody proper or be and really just being the scotsman that he is I, it really comes through that he is putting everything that he knows into the character, and I could see that in this in this movie. Oh, and, this and, and to some extent, you can almost imagine Georgia Moffat in the role of Abby, and these are their actual kids, and it, this is how he w- he would react to his kids but doing I, these crazy things. I hope that romance stays around forever. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> had they not had a had he not cheated. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and Peter Davidson could have played Billy Connolly's role. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, we oh, want him to be around he, forever, too. He completely missed a, missed a cue. <laughs> then it would be a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to the fifth doctor? Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, I, I like how also when his brother has that great breakdown... And he's just there to comfort him. Yeah. And, and and those those serious moments where he's angry at Abby, but not taking it out on the kids, or and he gets to show such a variety of emotion throughout the entire film. It kind of gets to show his range. Um, it was nice too to see that moment flipped. Yeah. That when they when they get out to find the vehicle abandoned on the on the beach, and that's the only piece of evidence of what has gone down. And the brother the kind of locked, loses it just because he can't get into the thing. Because once again, we're dealing with a missing key, you mm-hmm. know. And, and the kid mentality: Should we lock the doors? Well, yeah, we don't want anybody to steal it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so he has this, you know, just rage, grief, everything kind of pours out of him, breakdown. And David Tennant's there to kind of, you know, just just hold him and comfort him. But then we flip it. At the at the funeral at the end, when David Tennant is supposed to be delivering a eulogy and, and saying he something, and he, he his voice cracks and he just can't get it out, and so then it's the other brother to come to his rescue, and that for me really cemented their relationship. I mean, I had to get all the way through the movie before I kind of got that moment because yeah. I kind of spent most of it going, "You guys really aren't brothers. You pick on each other a lot, but you don't really have that." Bu- oh wait, <laughs> no, there it is. There it is. Okay, there are. Agreed. anybody who has a brother knows that that moment that you're you're dealing with. Um, and, and that's, that's, that's something else that I think with an American version of, of this particular screenplay, they, and I, I don't mean this as a slight, but they would have probably set their sights a little higher. They would have gone for, say, a Pierce Brosnan or a, a another actor who is Scottish but of some note to have played the pseudo-straight man to the craziness going on around him. Whereas with David Tennant, because he's so good at burying himself into these other roles... It's so refreshing to see him just kind of come out and do, as you you know, it, it almost feels like he's playing himself. It almost feels like it's just a slice of his life. And God, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the the subtleness of the film is what really makes it shine. It doesn't try to outdo itself, and and that goes right down to everybody's performances. Nobody is is trying to outdo themselves, mm-hmm. and David Tennant specifically uh he's he's a natural fit he's it's it's like he put on a comfortable pair of shoes and did a performance that he's very familiar with and it's is was great i absolutely loved it good chemistry all the way around oh yeah Um, absolutely uh, uh, you know good interactions and uh, but he's absolutely believable that he is these kids father yeah you don't well, he doubt gets a, that for a second. He gets a great moment with each of them. It's it, you, you yeah. never once felt that there was a a special relationship between you know the father and the son or anything like that. He, he he's equal parts parent to each yeah. one of the kids, and they all get that one moment to kind of come in and do something. And that's something else I appreciated with this is that 
a, a lot of times, again, I'm not going to pick on the American ones, but when they, when they do a comedy ensemble like this with a bunch of different kind of beats that are happening uh, that, that represent everybody's life falling apart in some way, shape, or form, frequently you don't get a resolution on any of them. Or on, on, on all of them. Right. They, right. They, they kind of deal with the main through line, and, and then that's it. This one really, by the time we got to the end, kind of felt like everybody who had had some sort of hiccup that showed up along the got line. Got some closure. Got some closure, got yeah. some sort of resolution. And and even though uh, the, the parents are still going through that divorce. It's still, uh, they, they, they've know, learned how to handle that with the kids. That we're going to be adults about it. Yeah. Which... And, well, and, and they're, they're and going. Even, they're going. Not only the kids, but their their relationship with each other is yeah. mended a bit, and that that's yeah. what I liked about it as well. It wasn't just for the kids' sake either. It was more of a an appreciation or respect that they saw for each other. Yeah. Uh, uh, his misgivings and her, uh, you know, need to control things and take the kids away to Newcastle or wherever they were moving to. Yeah, Newcastle. I, mean, I like that even if some of the resolutions are as simple as everyone's now seen this video and she's accepted the the the, the, yeah. the aunt's yeah. hooking the p- pumpkin, <laughs> it's, and it's kind of hinted and it's just it's there and okay yeah we're okay we're accepting it it's over and it's that's all you need. But just the, the the fact that the, the the other brother has now seen the video and is aware of the fact that there's an issue in the house, which he wasn't before. Yeah, I think gives that it, at least it gave me some hope that he is going to work on their relationship right. to try and make things better for right. her. Right. You know, and by, yeah. by publicly well, you admitting can tell that, that, you know, by that, that, he, that they yeah. yeah. So, but <laughs> watching watching the doctor, and I'm doing air quotes here. Say you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna be adult about this. We just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> that's the one unbelievable thing that you've done in this. It's the one unbelievable thing you've said. I don't buy it <laughs> because I know you, doctor, and you're a child at heart. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> Anything else before we move on to the schedule? Go find a copy yeah. of this movie yeah. and watch it because it's, it uh, um, the other things on the back of the box that are accurate are an enormously entertaining heart warmer, enormously charming, and hilarious. And I think all of those are fairly accurate. Yep. And, and if, if you kind of want to feel for it, if you've seen, I think Death at a Funeral is a kind of a similar type story. Very Another different British done, one. But, yeah, the, the British version. I don't know about the U.S. version. But this makes me really want to introduce Sarah to Death at a Funeral because she really liked this. And I think is so there I an th- American version of Death at a Funeral? Yeah. Oh, I did not realize it. Chris Rock? Yeah. Well, that's just unfortunate. <laughs> don't, don't don't watch that one. Watch the Frank Oz version. Frank Oz. All right. What do we got coming up in the schedule? I don't know. Are we back to schedule this week? We're we back, back to, to schedule. schedule. Back to schedule. Why wouldn't we be back to schedule? Um, what's our website? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I went to type in the name of the podcast and went. I can tell you what we're doing it for starts Friday with, night. Who starts with a T? Uh, what are we doing for Friday night? We're Who's doing the moon base. The moon. That's right. This is that week. That's because okay. it's one of Keith's favorites. <laughs> He's looking forward to watching it again. Oh, dude! Friday night. Who we did uh, midnight? Uh-huh. I'd forgotten what a good story that is. So good. It it's is so, so good. good. Wasn't a lot of tweeting going on because we all yeah. got enraptured with it again. It's so good. Um, yes, the moon base next week. Friday night. Who? Second Doctor, Cybermen, spoilers, uh, on the moon, um, which uh, <gasps> I know, right? <laughs> which uh, we'll be doing a lunar themed uh, show with uh, uh, some candy jar uh, awesomeness. We're going to uh, review Moon Blink by Sadie Miller, and we're also going to review the short story that uh, that uh, leads into that, which is uh, we're going to have it the title the, the Lock In. By Sarah Grunewagen. I believe I got that right. And you got that right thank too. you to Andy for uh, for for being a good editor and protecting his author <laughs> <laughs> from, and sending a pronunciation from from our, uh, our, our our context mangling. Um, and then we're also going to do um, a um, is, it, is it an actual TV comic or is it a TV TV comic? It's yeah. a TV comic um, just called Moon Landing, which is a little I don't know. One pager or something. It's it not is, a, yeah, it's, yeah, probably about eight pounds. But just for <laughs> eight pounds, 
Pals. Panels. <laughs> Panels. <laughs> I heard pounds too, but I translated Eight it on panels. my own. <coughs> well, it's British, so it still works. <laughs> but it, the context was just okay. So we're going to throw that in there just for now. Fun. They're measured in euros, or or until they vote. If they vote too, <laughs> or are they considering not? Yeah, they're they're voting this week. I think it's this week too. Uh, <coughs> whether to secede from the EU. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Don't do it. That's my that's my uh, my two cents on that. Man. My two shillings. <laughs> don't use shillings anymore. Two Quit pence. Saying two shillings. pence. They don't use pence either. <laughs> Bits. Well, they don't. Two euros on it. That's my two. <laughs> that's that's my two euros. euros on that matter. Well, no wonder you're for the union. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't want them to go back. The money confuses me. <laughs> don't this leave. makes sense. Euro, I got shilling, pound. I don't understand the rest of it. Uh, the following week, we're going to do Mask of Mandragora, which I still think I'm mispronouncing that one. And um, I think you're emphasizing or too much, but you've got the pronunciation close. Okay. Mandragora. 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 I don't know. Um, we'll find out in two weeks uh, when uh, we do the fourth Doctor Story Mask of Mandragora. Uh, and then the adversary archive that we'll be reviewing um, the actual Mask of Mandragora story, and along with the Mark of Mandragora comic, which is an oldie but a goodie, supposedly. So uh, there's that. And of course, the uh, schedule's posted online, and uh, you can follow along. And um, please, please, please feel free to join us for a Friday night who or two or ten, um, <laughs> and then come back here and get our thoughts and you can write feedback and uh, you know be part of our community because we appreciate it all right well if that's going to do it for this week until next week i'm glenn i'm sean i'm keith cheers good night everybody be seeing you you have been listening to traveling the vortex doctor who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the bbc no infringement is intended or implied